I believe in miracles because I believe in God. This is the message this ministry is taking to the world through signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm Reverend Chris Mockamer. I'm a pastor at Grace Cathedral. Today we have a wonderful program for you. Good music and singing, a sermon that I preach that I trust will increase your faith, getting you ready to receive from the Lord. Also, Reverend Steve and his wife Kathy will be on set and they have something very special that I know will bless you in a great way. And of course, you will watch people receiving prayer and receiving from the Lord. But first we have for you our Jubilee Youth Choir with a wonderful song, Listen and Be Blessed. Tonight's message is God's Miraculous Supply. Our God is a miracle worker. He is a miracle working God who promised to supply all the needs of his children. As they obey his will and live by faith in his promises. It tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Then in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Live by faith in what? By faith in the promises of God. 
in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were made in perfection. God supplied all their needs. They had need or want of nothing. It was perfection, a perfect society. No troubles, no cares, no needs. But unfortunately, as we well know, when they sinned and disobeyed God's word, their sin created a gulf between them and their God. Thus, that lack of supply was there. Now their needs were not being met. Under the curse of sin, people would live by the sweat of their brow. The earth was cursed. The human body was cursed. And the eternal soul was cursed. Therefore, the needs of the human race would be difficult to be met from this point forward. However, throughout the Bible, whenever people obeyed God and his word, God would always honor them by supplying their need and beyond. One great example is Abraham, father of the faithful. He obeyed the Lord in all that was commanded of him. He was called out from his country and from his family by God to live and dwell in tents and tabernacles in a strange land that was, that was promised to his seed as a heritage to come. The Bible says Abraham, well, he was obedient to God. And as a result, he was wealthy because he obeyed God in all things. All his needs were supplied and beyond. God was careful with Abraham that he did not take anything from any man lest any man would boast that they made Abraham rich. It tells us in Genesis chapter 14, verses 22 and 23, And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Job was a man who feared God greatly. In Job chapter 1, verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. As a result, God was Job's prosperity and protection. And even Satan had to confess this before God himself. It tells us in Job chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. God did it. God was his provider, but he served the Lord faithfully, perfect and upright before the Lord in all of his ways. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 17, there is an amazing story of God's miraculous supply. What God will do for those who are faithful to him, even in desperate times and situations. Here, in chapter 17 of 1 Kings, the prophet Elijah stands before King Ahab, who is wicked in sins and idolatry, telling him that it would not rain in the years to come, but according to his word. So the Lord commands Elijah to hide himself by a certain brook in Israel. And there he would drink of the water, and the ravens would feed him. And the Bible says that every morning and every evening, the ravens would come and deliver bread and meat to the prophet. Well, after so long of the drought, the brook dries up. Now, at this time, God's judgment of drought is upon the whole nation of Israel because of their sins and idolatry. This was not an easy time for the prophet Elijah either. 
For the man of God was enduring the same judgments that the people of Israel were enduring. And he was innocent. But remember, it doesn't matter what you have to go through in life, what you have to endure. Elijah was in the will of God. And because he was in the will of God, God obligated himself to take care of Elijah and to protect him and to supply all of his needs. Now, remember what God's word tells us in the opening scripture in Philippians. God promises to supply all of our needs, not all of our wants. No, you must know the difference. There's a big difference between needs and wants. And you must know this difference if you are to live in peace according to the promises of God. So once the brook dried up, Elijah does not go into despair or question God. He simply waits upon the will and word of God to be revealed to him. So the Lord directs Elijah to a widow woman in a certain village. Now this woman was out and about gathering sticks to build a fire. Building this fire that she could make a little cake out of a little bit of meal and a little oil that she had left in her house. And I read in 1 Kings chapter 17, beginning in verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she... And he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. God, in his great wisdom and grace, used this miraculous supply, not only to sustain his holy prophet, but also to supply the need of a widow woman and son who were on the verge of starvation. God had provided... Was it all that they wanted? No. But it was everything they needed until the day that God's judgment upon the land subsided. When God delivered the Israelite people from 400 years of Egyptian bondage, God not only supplied their freedom from slavery, he protected Israel from all the plagues that he was raining down upon the Egyptian people. And God did not stop there. He supplied the whole nation with good health before they started out on their journey to the promised land. He even caused the Egyptian people to give their wealth over to Israel, and rightfully so, after having served them in slavery for 400 years. Exodus Chapter 12, verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Psalm 105, 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Now, some Christians struggle to believe that God will heal in this age of grace after Calvary. Yet God in his word shows in demonstration by supplying healing and good health to a whole nation under the law before Calvary. Coming out of Egypt, God made a covenant with Israel to protect them and fight their battles to supply their food and drink, and even give them immunity to sickness and disease. However, they were responsible to meet certain conditions of the covenant. 
Because a covenant is two ways. It's not one-sided. Exodus chapter 23, verses 23 through 25. The word of the Lord to Israel. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he, sh and he shall bless thy bread and, and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Deuteronomy chapter 7, beginning in verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thine kin and the flocks of thine sheep in the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. This is all promised under the law. Jesus had not even come yet. Divine blood had not even been spilled yet. What a, God, what a provider God is when people will put faith in his promises and obey him in all things. Consider the, war, Lord, the word of the Lord this night. God did not only promise his miracle supply to Israel, he demonstrated it. As Israel journeyed through the desert and wilderness to the land of Canaan, God supplied a great cloud to cover the whole nation by day to protect them from the heat and sunlight. He provided th them a pillar of fire by night to light their way and to keep them warm. He fed them manna from heaven, bread from heaven, and he provided quail for meat. And when they were in need of water, out from a rock gushed the water to supply and quench their thirst. Read about this in the 105th Psalm. Part of the law of Moses, when God gave it to him, included God's plan of tithing and giving love offerings. And of course, the tithe is one-tenth of all that you earn and that is given to you. And love offerings, now they, that is money which is given to you that you give unto the Lord above and beyond the tithe. In God's plan, he takes what you have left after you tithe and give, and by his miraculous supply, he makes what you have left go much further than what you could have made 100% go for yourself. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 and 32. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. All tithes, all offerings, God considers holy unto him. Now there was a time in the history of Israel when Israel broke this covenant with God. They failed in tithing and giving love offerings unto the Lord, and they brought the curse of God upon themselves. So the Lord spoke to the people through his prophet Malachi. In Malachi chapter 3, verses 7 through 11, Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, 
and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field." saith the Lord of hosts. It is important to note now a few things from this passage of Scripture in the book of Malachi. First, when Israel failed to tithe and give offerings unto the Lord, God classified this as robbing him. This was not man's classification. This is God's accusation, robbing him. People can be so careful not to take from another person, not to rob them. But yet even Christians will be so negligent and careless in robbing God, robbing Lord God Almighty in tithes and in offerings. Second, as a result, God cursed Israel for their failure, for breaking this covenant in tithing and giving unto him. Third, However, the Lord said, if you keep the covenant, if you will obey me in tithing and giving unto me, that I will open up the windows of heaven upon your life and pour out blessings in such quantity that you will not have room enough to receive it. Where else in the Bible does God promise heaven's window open blessings? He promises it here, and it's through the covenant of tithing and giving unto the Lord. Finally, number four, God would see to it, not only to open up the windows of heaven and pour out the blessings upon their life, but that the obedient in tithing and giving, God would see to it that they were immune from any force that would seek to destroy or hinder the fruits of their labor. Some people believe that the covenant of tithing and giving unto the Lord only applies under the law. Therefore, it's not applicable under grace. But this is just an excuse of people who do not want to part with the Lord and share with Him, because it's not according to the Word of God. The plan of tithing was giving, was given before the law was given, and it applies under grace today. The plan of tithing and giving offerings is a covenant between God and His people, before the law, under the law, and under grace. For example, Abraham, who lived before the law, paid tithes. Genesis chapter 14, verse 20, And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. Now speaking of Abraham, and he gave him tithes of all. Abraham won a great victory for God. He brought the spoils unto Melchizedek, the high priest of the Lord in what is known as today Jerusalem, and he paid tithes unto him. Jacob, he made a vow to God to pay tithes, and he too lived before the law. Genesis chapter 28, verses 20 through 22. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Then, under grace in Jesus' day, 
in Matthew chapter 23. Here Jesus is rebuking the religious hypocrites because they were so careful to pay tithe, the tenth, on every little bit that they brought in. And yet they forsook the more important matters of judgment, mercy, and faith. Jesus told them, basically, in so many words, that all of it's important. Matthew 23, 23, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. In other words, it's all important. Never hold back on God in difficult financial times, believing that somehow you're not obligated to the covenant of, of tithing and giving unto the Lord in stressful financial times. Such thinking is a lack of faith in God's miraculous supply. Such thinking will rob you of God's blessings and God's deliverance for your life. You know, if you think about it, sometimes God allows a person's faith in his promises to be tested and tried. And many times he uses difficult situations. Again, taking you back to that story in the 17th chapter of Kings. Remember that widow woman in Elijah's day that I spoke about. During that great famine, she had no husband to provide for her. She had a child to provide for, and she only possessed a small amount of oil and meal, and that was it. She was prepare it, eat it with her son, and then get ready to die. However, the man of God commanded her, under these extreme circumstances, Bake me a cake first. Then if you do, if you obey, the meal barrel shall not waste, neither the cruise of oil fail until the famine is over. Now in that moment, God was testing that woman's faith. What would she do? Would she look at her circumstances, give in to doubt and fear, and declare this is an unreasonable request by God and his prophet? Or would she trust in the word of the Lord and his miraculous supply and by faith obey the command given unto her? Some people think, again I say, it's unreasonable to pay tithes and give offerings unto the Lord in difficult circumstances. Yet they do not consider God's word and his promises that declare the plan of tithing and giving offerings is God's way to bless his people, to make a way where there is no way. God's plan of tithing and giving is their opportunity to receive from God's miraculous supply. Now I take you to the New Testament. And here, consider the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount and what he had to say about God's miraculous supply. Beginning in verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Don't worry about the daily cares of life. The birds of the air, they are not concerned with gathering food and storing it into barns and into areas, yet daily they go out with a song in their mouth, and God supplies their food. Day by day by day. Verse 28, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? The flowers, the grass, it grows everywhere, all over the world, and in great abundance. And the flowers, they are arrayed by the glory of God in a much greater way than Solomon in all his glory. Child of God, are you not more valuable to God than the fowls of the air, than the grass and the flowers of the field? Verse 31, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Your God is a reasonable God. Your God can see all he knows all. He knows what you have need of even before you ask him. But here is the key. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't focus on your need and on your lack. This will only produce doubt and fear within you. Instead, focus on your God. Focus on his righteousness. Focus on his promises. Focus on his miraculous supply. And listen to this powerful testimony from the psalmist in his old age, who had lived many, many years serving the Lord. Psalm 37, 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God promised his children to supply all their needs by Christ Jesus. God will be there for you in the good times and in the bad times. He will be there for you on the mountain peak and down in the valley. He will be there in prosperous times and in lean times. It will not always be easy in this life because we are not in a perfect society, but a sinful one. And yes, like the prophet Elijah, many times God's children must suffer with the rest of those who are wicked upon the earth. But when you serve the Lord, when you're faithful to him and you stand on his promises, he promised to supply all of your needs. He promised he would never leave you or forsake you. Friend, watching this sermon tonight, listening, God's miraculous supply can be in your life. But deliverance, healing, whatever it is you need in your life, friend, it all starts in the soul. Salvation for the eternal soul. Let's make sure that all is well between you and God, that there's no sin, no disobedience, that there's nothing in your life that would hinder God from performing the miraculous for you, from supplying your need. Say this prayer with me. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful. He is just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Say, O oh God, oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Father, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the divine blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus. And amen. And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours. He has supplied you forgiveness of sin, justification, freedom from guilt, and eternal life for your soul. But his miraculous supply will not stop there. What is the need for your body? The Bible declares with his blood stripes, we are healed. Through the blood of Jesus spilled at the whipping post, we have healing for the body. And Jesus said before he went back to heaven that his believers would lay hands on the sick 
and they would recover. Friend, watching, listening, I'm the Lord's believer. Are you ready to receive from the Lord? Are you ready for that miraculous supply in your life, given according to the Word of God? You who are watching, put your hand against mine on the screen as a form of laying on of hands. You who are listening, put your hand on your listening device. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick in body, those who are in pain, those who have a great physical need in their life, a great need in their mind. Lord, break every bondage. In the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, heal, heal, heal. Let that virtue flow, O oh God, to each one. And O oh Lord, supply this need in your miraculous way. Supply it, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. In the name of your Son, Jesus, and amen. Friend, watch every improvement, and you must give God the honor, the praise, and the glory, and let us know what God's done for you. We would love to hear about it. We will rejoice with you. Send it by mail. Send the testimony by email. Send it through Facebook, however you choose to do so. But let us know what God has done for you. And friend, you who are listening, you who are watching, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need him in this hour. You need the spirit of truth abiding and living within you. I'm going to call the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you. Get ready to receive. Get off to yourself and start praising the Lord. And as this anointing rests upon you, praise him with that word glory and don't stop till the Holy Ghost comes in. Because when he does come in, friend, he will take over those words that you speak in your tongue, your language. And he will take over your tongue and he will speak in another language using your tongue, signifying that he has taken control in your human vessel, your human temple. It's the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call the anointing down upon this people. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And friend, keep praising the Lord and don't stop till the Holy Ghost comes in. God bless you. COVID-19 has changed our lives. It's changed how we go shopping, how we interact with others, how we do business, how we help those in need. But we know that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Even though things around us have changed, God's love is still the same. And as we distance ourselves from each other, we know that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So let His love give you comfort and peace wherever you are. Join us as we stream live from Grace Cathedral every weekend. If you enjoy the Ernest Angley Hour, go to our YouTube channel. Select a favorite sermon or worship song anytime, day or night. Each day can bring disappointment and discouragement, but fight back by singing and worshiping with the Lord. Don't let the enemy get an upper hand. Rejoice in the Lord. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified when new videos are loaded. Friend, I'd like to invite you to join us at Grace Cathedral. Each and every weekend, we have four services. Come be with us. We're interdenominational. You're always welcome to visit and worship the Lord with us. We have our Friday night miracle service at 7 p.m. Oh, you'll enjoy a wonderful faith-building sermon, good music and singing, and those who are in need of prayer can receive of the Lord. Then Saturday, 7 p.m., we have a youth service in our Akron location, a service dedicated to the youth. However, people of all ages participate and attend. It is a great blessing. And then Sunday, we have two services. First, we have a morning service at 10 a.m. You'll enjoy more good music and singing, a special teaching session in the main auditorium from the Word of God 
Also, we have Sunday school for our boys and girls in our junior church department. Then Sunday evening, 7 p.m. It's a wonderful worship time in the Lord. Oh, it's a great program that we have on Sunday nights and you will be blessed. I want to encourage you, friend, if you're not a partner of this Jesus ministry, a member of Grace Cathedral, partner with us. Help us take Jesus to the world. And each month that you sponsor this worldwide outreach ministry, you get a new book of the month. And friend, these are blessings, spiritual food for your soul. And the July Giant Little Book is Add to Your Faith a wonderful faith message. So when you send in your support for the month of July, request gift offer P364. Friend, I want to encourage you to give whatever the Lord lays upon your heart. Become a member, tithe and give. Help us take Jesus to the world. You can donate through our website at earnestangely.org or you can send in your support by mail Write to Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. And those of you watching in Canada, write to Ernest Angley Ministries, Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z5P9. Well, now we have more good music and singing coming up for you. It's the Jesus Trio. Check your roadmap. <laughs> Find it. Don't lay that road map down at the end of that big freeway. We'll wear a robe and crown. Soon the Lord is coming, and we will take that flight. He's calling, can't you hear him? It's time to make things right. Receive the Holy Spirit. Steve Millar, and we're going to share with you one of the ministers featured in our Growing in Grace mission program. And now we have Kathy with us today, my wife. And yes, I'm excited to be here to talk about this program, this Growing in Grace program. And it started back in September with mm -hmm. our congregation, and now we're opening it up to our partners who are viewing now so they can be a part of the Growing in Grace program. And we're actually in contact with over a hundred different ministers. But right now, we want to just 
focus on one pastor in particular who's a part of the program, and his name is Pastor David Livingstone, and he is from India. And it's so exciting that we get to be a part of providing literature to India. Yeah, and he was a, he's been a minister for 16 years, but didn't he say to us that you know, that he needed help and that, you know, no one's ever helped him in yes, his ministry. Yes, he did. And that is really heartbreaking that for 16 years he's been a minister and he's never had any organization help him and support him with religious material. And so it's our privilege yes. and honor to be able to help support him with the literature, to get it into their hands. Well, there's a great need, and we know that there is a great need out there because there's ministers that need to get the gospel, but they don't have the finances to share literature with the people. Yes, and many that's of what, them don't even have Bibles. Yes, and that's what our program's about, sharing the literature that we have here mm -hmm with people all over the world because we can't go all over the world and there's ministers that can be in India that can go out into the bush and be able to talk to someone about winning a soul, you know, about receiving Jesus Christ and they can win that soul for the Lord and they can give them that literature. We're trying to build a relationship with each one of the ministers so that we may ship out, you know, packages to them they get their literature, mm -hmm. they're able to share it with their congregation, or they may be able to share it with different prisons that they go to. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to hear the results. They're going to give us pictures and then we're going to send them out more mm -hmm. and we're just going to grow in grace with them and we're going to just grow this world with Jesus Christ. Yes, and you know what? When they when we sent them the shipment of literature there in India, I wish I could have been there that day because it looked like Christmas time for them. He's distributing the literature to every person there in his congregation. And what's exciting about that is that they then can take that literature home with them. And then during the week, they can be studying the Word of God because, again, many of them don't have Bibles. And that piece of literature might be the only thing that they have to sustain them until they're able to go back to church. What I love about Pastor David is, you know, he's so humble that he's asking us for sermons, you know, different books how to help the youth. There's just so many ways that he just wants to help the people. That's right. in his heart. <laughs> yes, you know? and later he communicated with us that his people were just devouring the literature. And after reading the literature, some of them realized that they wanted to be baptized in water. So they went down to the river and he baptized those people in water. And, and I, it's just precious. It is, because I saw the pictures and it just reminds me of Jesus going into the water and being baptized, because yes. that's Bible. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But he's not just stopping there. He's really conducting his service in a holy way. They've had Holy Communion and they're all dressed in white. And you can tell that they're really honoring God and they're really respecting the Lord and his word. And then later on, you see him doing street work and having street meetings. Yes, and and it just brings me back to missionary work, you know, <laughs> where you're just bringing all the people together. Maybe there's some people in huts and houses and you're just, you know, saying, come on, come on, we're going to have it. You know, we're going to talk about Jesus. You know, we're going to teach a Jesus lesson. And, yeah, and that's why street um, meetings are so important because there might be people who actually won't go to a building or a church to worship. But if you're having a street meeting and they can hear what you're saying, it really does draw the people and they don't feel threatened. They, they can listen at a distance and the Holy Spirit can then just draw them to that street meeting. Yes, and, and like you said, there's a lot of them that are into idol worship. Well, they, if they start hearing the truth and the truth gets into them and the Holy Spirit can deal with them, they can accept Jesus Christ into their heart. And he even goes and has youth services too. Yes, and um, I believe uh, during one of the youth meetings, the youth requested Bibles and they wanted English Bibles. So it's exciting to know that we're going to be sending them Bibles and I know that they will be excited to receive them. <laughs> yes, and in, in the pictures that I saw, you know, the youth are, you know, they receive the literature 
And what a blessing to receive this literature, know the Bible truth, because the devil fights the youth. You know, the devil, you know, with peer pressure, they get to know the Bible truth. They know that Jesus Christ is their example, and they just need to walk in the Jesus footsteps. Yes, and I'm so excited that we're supporting Pastor David Livingstone of mm -hmm. India. And I know that there's more and more pastors that are a part of this program that we're going to be able to share with the people in the so, future. So this is a wonderful opportunity that you have to be part of this program, you know, taking the gospel to the world. And that is our responsibility to take this gospel to the world. And each week, each time we're going to be featuring a different minister. And it's going to be such a blessing because you're going to hear what that minister is doing with the literature that you sponsored. So watch this video and learn how to donate. Growing in Grace Weekly sends free Bible study books, magazines, and bless cloths throughout the world to souls hungering and thirsting to know more about God's love. We directly ship these packages to pastors, prison chaplains, evangelists, churches and prayer groups free of charge. We ask nothing except they verify materials received and are shared with the common people. I would like to thank you for giving the word of God. Our recent shipments went out to Nigeria. And we also create a lifeline with them through our Facebook and YouTube sites. Won't you join us each month with a free will offering and invest in these broken lives? Reach out and make a difference. I got then now we are receiving miracles such as the miracle of Antoine who has a headache and after using breast cloth, he has helped. I got saved, I got really born again. Now I'm free and I take this time to thank MS Angry Ministries. May my God bless you. Go to our website and make a donation to the Growing in Grace Missions program today. I got saved, I got really born again, set free by Jesus' blood, oh the joy that he brought in. I got saved, I got Jesus in my heart. I got old time reading. Now taking you into Grace Cathedral, watch as people receive prayer. Listen to their testimony of how God has blessed them. And friend, remember what God is doing for others. He can and he will do for you. Now watch and be blessed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I sanctify the Lord God. I declare, O Lord, Every miracle, every healing is yours. You are the healer. We are just witnesses unto your work. And for that, O oh Lord, we give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In the name of your son, Jesus, and amen. Welcome. And where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. I'm Pastor yeah. Betty Gardner. I know. And Welcome. Thank you. Oh, and I need a fourfold miracle tonight. You can see right there where it looks like the vein, I, the last 12 weeks I've gone through some stress and like the vein tried to push out there. But that happened while I was planning to come here for this left hip, it didn't quite heal. And this right knee is feel like a cracking going on in there. And then the left knee the same thing and the legs hurts and aches. Stiffness and soreness. Well, you know, Jesus said, will thou be made whole? Jesus. Everything. And the Lord even promised to renew our youth. Yes, he did. 
Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. In the name of Jesus, oh, yes, Lord, Jesus. Lord, move for your servant. Lord, as she ministers the word, make her whole, renew her youth. Yes, In the blood name of Jesus, loose her from every condition. I call healing to her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet and give the Lord a praise. What do you need from the Lord tonight? Um, well, I'm having a lot of pain. I think I pulled a muscle or something and I just keep having these pains and I keep traveling and I, um, I can't sleep very In well. In the name of Jesus, loose her from that, heal her. In the name of Jesus, and take it all away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that should do it. Thank you. All right. God, give the Lord a big praise. God bless you. Welcome both of you. This is my wife here. Nice to meet you. Just, Where are you from? We're from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes, and um, we just want God to, um, my wife has been feeling a little bit ill, and my daughter, she's been feeling ill as well. But the Lord has been blessing us miraculously. But we just want God to continue to put our hand on our family and continue to bless us, but to heal her and to yes. heal my daughter. Well, healing is the children's bread. That's what Jesus said. In the name of Jesus, I call healing to her body. Lord, I curse any sickness, the trouble. Loose her from all of it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And Lord, give her strength, a miracle of strength. And now, I'm going to anoint your hands. Take this to your daughter. Yes, Lord, anoint his hands. Yes, sir. God, raise up their child. Yes. Not only give her healing, yes. but yes. protection, yes. immunity from sickness yes. to come in the name of Jesus. Yes. We agree for this to be done. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God you. bless you both. Come Thank back you. and be with us anytime. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, the past few weeks, I was having trouble with my mind, and I couldn't remember stuff. I came up here for prayer, and the Lord really, really moved for me, um, and my mind is just so at peace. And then through work, they saw the change, and they ended up giving me employee of the quarter. And that's just an amazing testimony. And sure. people came up to me, and they're like, aren't you, like, so excited you got that? And I'm like, I'm just grateful that God gave it to me. I gave him all the glory for it. Yeah. And I Rightfully just, so. Yes, and I just wanted to give the Lord sure. the praise tonight. Yeah, you're letting your light shine. Yes. He's helping you. <laughs> thank Lord you. anoint her. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you for what you did. Thank for you, your Jesus. honor and glory in the name of Jesus. And continue thank to let that light shine thank you, Jesus. to others. Amen. God bless, God bless you. you. Friend, down through the years, God has blessed, saved, healed, delivered people through this Jesus ministry. And if this Jesus ministry has been a blessing to you, maybe you have a friend or a loved one who's been blessed, let us know about it. We would love to hear your testimony. Now, you can send your testimonies by email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. Send in that testimony honor and glorify the Lord for the work he's done in your life. And if you want to see more episodes of the Ernest Angley Hour, go to ernestangley.org. And if you're watching on YouTube, become a subscriber to our channel and ring the bell. That way, every time we add new content, which is frequently, you will be notified about it. Oh, what a blessing it can be to you. And by all means, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram on each social media platform. We have a wealth of information to bless you and help you grow in the Lord. It's worth engaging with us. And if you have the opportunity, friend, do read the latest edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine on our website for free. Just go to ernestangely.org. Well, I hope you are blessed by the program today. Friend, we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.